quite some time. I want to bring you to a closing moment. We've seen the leadership of Peter. And now we're about to see a shift from Peter's leadership to, to Paul. And if I could again remind you, what we wanted to have you see is where there were moments in which the church could absolutely, positively have been ended in these episodes that are going to be lifted. There were powers to be that were trying to destroy the church, and it could have been ended at the death of James. And once they knew that they could slay James, the powers to be then were looking at trying to do the same to Peter. And they would continue to, to persecute and to create the harm. Matter of fact, Paul himself was a persecutor. But there was a moment on the Damascus Road where the Lord met him, it could have ended there as well. It's interesting how God can turn a life around. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So I want to pick up, and, and uh, we, we will look at Acts throughout the incoming year, but I want to just pick it up right here with two verses. You see the verses that I've given you in, this, in the bulletin, but I would like just to spend a little bit of time around, around two verses. Chapter 9 and verses 26 and 27. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. I'd like to lift as a topic to go with this text and for your thinking, a subject to go with this scripture and for this sermon, an example of our Father's forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you will bless your word and hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Bless your word, dear Lord, that it be for us a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Bless your word, Lord, send it forth, and please do not allow it to return unto your void, but do that which you have called it to do. Bless your word, Lord, that we will not just be hearers of it, but doers of it. Bless your word, Lord, that we'll come to understand it as the words of eternal life. For the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Bless your word, Lord. Your word will become our words, and our words will become your word. So let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord. Thy people heareth. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. And God's people said, Amen. I want to lift up these two verses because I think that these are two significant verses when it comes to the early life of the church. You may not be able to see everything that I see, and, and perhaps I know I can't always see everything that you see. But what I want to suggest to you is that there is something about these two verses that tell us the story pretty much of uh, the early life of Saul, and who we also know to be Paul. And we just experienced in this ninth chapter where uh, he 
uh, had the conversion experience and also what we may call the, the calling experience. Uh, Paul's intent was to destroy this fledging church, this new church, this baby church. Uh, his desire was to, to capture persons and bring them in for trial, men and women. And in the process, he would be destroying families. Uh, his, his mindset was to, to bring an end to this church. But have you ever met Jesus? And on that road called Damascus, as he was moving from Jerusalem to Damascus to carry out this mandate with official documents in hand, the Lord cast a light into his life. And he fell down and he became blind. And, and, and you know the story. And Ananias was involved in helping him to be able to see. And, and he retained his sight or he gained his sight. And, and the story goes on that he became one who was the great leader in the early church. Uh, but whenever he would go to church, especially there in Damascus, uh, the people wondered about him. Matter of fact, the text even said they were afraid of him. Uh, their concern was that this was the old Saul or the old Paul, and that he was still one who, what that's saying, uh, a leopard does not, ah, that's right, will not change its spots. In other words, this person, this personality, this, this, uh, this man, this person of yesterday was going to be the same today. And sometimes, no matter how much you might try to convince someone, no matter how much you even might change your clothes and get all dressed up, they still see the same dirty you. Uh, uh, sometimes people cannot begin to see anything else except your yesterday. Uh, sadly to be said, sometimes it is that persons have already added up the years behind you and still want to keep them fresh before you. It, it is interesting that somehow people will not be able to let go and forgive. And, and this is the story uh, that is important uh, that I want to suggest to you that, that God created a model, an example of his, of his forgiveness. And that model, that forgiveness, it, it, is, it is in the church that it becomes the, the way of life. And, and so... So he's taken to the church, to the other disciples, to the other apostles, and, and, and yet they cannot see him in a new light. But yet there is always a blessing when somebody can see you and doesn't mind speaking up for you. And so if I can, I would just like to introduce you to a person who, who has a, a moment, just a cameo moment, and then he's gone. And Paul continues to move forward. And, and that man's name is, is Barnabas. Barnabas is, uh, is the person who takes Paul under his wing and, and, and blesses him to be developed and help him to grow and does everything he can. I, I, I don't know if you've ever had somebody like that who, who can see potential in you, who can see the best in you when everybody else sees the worst in you. Is that the song? <laughs> and, 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 and yet, no matter how dirty you might look, they can see something cleaner. Uh, they, 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 they look before, uh, above and beyond your faults. And, and, and the word forgiveness is a marvelous word, but it really means to forgive a person in spite of all of their faults and their failures, and their wrongs. The blessing of the matter of forgiveness is that it says indeed to the person who is broken down that they are worth being picked up. Who has fallen is worth more to be lifted up. Who in their worst state is still good to God. Oh, and, and this is what Barnabas did. 
Barnabas in these two verses, Barnabas steps up in this 27th verse and, and, and says to those who have already made up their mind that this is Saul slash Paul, that no, I, I've seen him. I've seen what happened to him and how he came through the Damascus Road experience. I've seen just where he is now and how he spoke boldly to all the others. And, and I believe that when there's somebody who can do that, they can begin to create a, a, a spread, a contagious spread of love, a contagious way of love, a contagious thought of love. And, and as you read a little beyond that 27th verse, Paul is able to contend with the Hellenistic persons of his day who are absolutely against Christianity and even begin to attack Paul. And then the people of the church, the other disciples, are the ones who gather him up to make sure he escapes. Ah, that's what God does for us every now and again, I believe. He, he knows how to help us live for another day. Oh, and, and the thing about it is that I want to suggest to you, is there anybody that has done that for you? Is there anybody that you've done that for? And you might ask the question, well, how can I do that? Because sometimes forgiving people is a hard thing to do. Uh, sometimes uh, it is a matter of persons thinking that they can take advantage of me. Sometimes it looks as if what it is is a matter of cowardice. And, an, and it is a matter of, of my surrendering. Sometimes it's not what I think. They should get the full orb of justice and, and be able to understand that what they did wrong, they should punish, be punished for it. But have you ever had somebody tell you that there is a need for a second chance? Is there anybody here that can say, I need one too? I want to suggest the first thing that, that uh, absolutely is is mind-boggling, and, and that is that is encouraging forgiveness. And sometimes you've got to uh, look a little bit beyond what you see. And when you look beyond what you see, you can then turn around and fill in what's vacant, what's empty. The name Barnabas, you can pick it up in that fifth chapter, I believe is a name that means encouragement. He's the son of encouragement. He's the kind of person that knows how to make you feel good. He's the kind of person that knows how to help you when, when you're down. He's the kind of person uh, that lives out his name. And when God gives you a certain gift, you ought to be able to understand that the Lord has blessed you with something unusual. And, and, and what, what, what Barnabas had was the gift of encouragement. He, he took Paul in the midst of Paul's lowest moments and began to let Paul know that he was an, a great person. He took him in and was able to tell him that he could do marvelous and wonderful things. And it's so significant about how, how Barnabas handled Paul, how the relationship was. Because everywhere you see the travels of Paul and Barnabas, you always see the name Barnabas first. Except there's a moment in which he doesn't have his name first. Matter of fact, it just says Paul and friends. Now that's good when your ego doesn't get in the way. Because some of us wouldn't allow it if we happen to be the chief person and the first person, would want somebody to put our name last. But when you know what your gift is, and you know what God has blessed you with, when you understand how good God has been to you, when you're not threatened and, you're, and your whole manner of doing things is, is not overwhelmed by what other people do. You, you, you don't worry about your status and you don't worry about your titles and you don't worry about those kind of minute things. You, you know what to do when, when God puts you in a place to do what you have to do. And, and, and that's Barnabas. Barnabas lifts up Paul and allows Paul to even get to the front position because he's encouraging Paul on this journey. 
That's what life is all about. Because the way that God works is that he will turn around and bless you even more when you stop worrying about somebody else's blessing. I, 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 I sometimes wonder about how we, we react. When somebody else is blessed, don't worry about that person's blessing. Just realize that God's got a blessing for you too. And matter of fact, if you stay in the rain, you're going to get some rain on you. You'll catch that on the way to the parking lot. You just have to do what the Lord wants you to do. And without any intimidation, without any uh, lack of confidence and self-confidence, Barnabas pushes Paul forward. And there was this great team of Barnabas and Paul. But there was one contentious moment. Pick it up in the series of verses. Where they have been successful in the first missionary journey. They go out and they come back. And they want to go out again. Paul is adventurous. Have you ever seen anybody turned on and, and just, just anxious about doing what the Lord wants them to do? And, and so he suggests to Barnabas, let's go back over the field that we've just traveled. But we want to take John Mark with us. Hmm. Paul says, no way. <laughs> Not him. Well, let me give you some information. Let me fill in the blanks. You see, there was a team of, of Barnabas and Paul and their assistant, John Mark. John Mark's mother owned a house in Jerusalem. And in that house, all of Jesus' disciples and Jesus himself were assembled. He knew, he knew. He knew this movement. He had an understanding. And so, on this first uh, missionary journey, John Mark is with Paul and Barnabas. Let me give you another situation that you need to know about. John Mark also happened to be a cousin of Barnabas. It's in the family. And so it happens that there somewhere in the journey around Perga and Paphlia, John Mark says, I quit. I don't know what it is. I have no idea why. And guess what? Neither does the, the scholars. So I don't feel that bad. And, and he leaves and he goes back to Jerusalem. And so when they decide that they want to go back out, Paul says adamantly, no way. And, and, and when you look at it, of all the persons who were to give somebody a second chance, come on now, it ought to be who? <sighs> if anybody ought to give somebody a break, it ought to be somebody who got a break. No, maybe I'm not registering yet. If anybody has been given some mercy, it ought to be somebody who has received mercy before. <clears throat> if anybody is down and on, on their luck and don't know how to get back up, it ought to be somebody who will help somebody else who's been down because they know what it is to be down. Maybe I'm not making my point clear. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll stretch it just a little bit more. If you've ever been broke, you ought to be somebody that want to help somebody else who's broke. Is anybody ought to be able to sympathize with somebody who's going through an addiction or having a difficulty? It ought to be somebody that's been rehabbed and, and been changed again. 
maybe I'm not making my point. You might not be able to identify with it because you are who you are, but, but anybody that has ever had troubles in their lives realize that if that's the case, I ought not be a trouble for anybody else. And I know I might sound like I'm having a difficulty with Paul, but no, I'm having a difficulty with all of us, me included. But what I know about my father, no matter how bad I am, he's still good. Encouraging forgiveness. And, and, and this situation is going to get better. Why? Because the model is there. The model was provided by that master himself, Jesus. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It, it, it was him who, who gave us the sense of mercy and and kindness. It, it was him who helped us to see that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, and and so, so, so the question is, what happened? I might say to you that it is what I would call engaging forgiveness. It's not talk. It's action. It, it's, not, it's not your... Your, your ability to smile and, and give yourself a presence. But it's, it's knowing that when the Lord bless you, you ought to be able to bless somebody else. Go, if you will, over there to the fourth chapter of 2 Second, Second Timothy, and, and you'll see what I mean. Paul is at a, at a real low point. Uh, he's, he's at a really low point. Paul is at the point of being all by himself. And Paul talks about all those who have been around him who are now forsaken him. Uh, Paul talks about Demas who's forsaken me and have, have a love for other things. He talks about Crescens for Galilee that he left and Titus went to Dalmatia. And then he talks about only Luke is with me. I'm really all by myself, and, and the death awaits me. I'm, I'm getting ready to go under the axe. I'm getting ready to be, be executed. I, I don't know whatever else I, I can do. But, 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 Timothy, when you come in this direction, I, I want you to, to bring my coat, and I want you to bring the parchment. But I also want you to bring... Oh, I wish somebody knows this story can fill in the blank. I want, I, want, I, want, I want you to bring John Mark. And I like the way it is said. It's a beautiful expression because he's profitable to me in ministry. Oh, what a marvelous, wonderful statement over there in that fourth chapter. And, and, and he says it. I don't know what he did in the past. I don't know how bad things have been. I don't remember how he, he didn't want to go up into Pyrgia and Pamphylia. I, I don't know why he decided to go back to Jerusalem. But I know one thing. He's profitable to me in ministry. I, 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 don't, I don't know what took place. And I'm regretful of all the things that have happened. But, but one thing I know, he's okay with me. I, I've come to the conclusion that whatever took place in the past, I'm willing to allow it to be forgotten. But I know one thing for sure. I need him, and he needs me. I've come to, the, come to the conclusion that whatever happened, I've got to let it go and let God. I've got to get to the point where I don't hold things against nobody anymore. I've got to get to the point where I start loving my brother and my sister. I've got to get to the point where I can tell somebody that they're going to be all right. I've got to pull them together and realize that the cause is greater than you and I. But I've got to get to the point where I can say, my brother, we're going to be able to do this thing together. Is there anybody here who needs to forgive somebody else and then need the forgiving love of that same person? Don't you know God loves you? 
and in spite of where you might be and what you might have done, our God loves you to the max and to the uttermost. I'm glad about a God who loves me like that, who can put that love back into my own heart and back into my own spirit that I'll be able to love somebody. But the word profitable is an interesting word. That word means to have a, a furtherance. In other words, it ain't stuck on yesterday. It ain't stuck on today. It sees a brighter future in the lives of us. Matter of fact, it is a matter of a word that even goes beyond furtherance. It means progress. Oh, progress. That's what we need in our world, progress. Is there anybody want to have some progress and walk together, children, and don't get weary? There's a great camp meeting in the promise. Is there anybody here that looks for a brighter day in their lives? Not worried about yesterday's issues and yesterday's sin. Is there anybody here that can say, I'm living for tomorrow because I see who holds my tomorrow because the same person holds my hand. Is there anybody here that can say, I don't know about you. I'm letting all that yesterday stuff that gives me nothing but gray hair and gives me all sins. I'm letting all of that mess go. I'm going to live a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ because I know my God is a mighty God. He'll move the pathways of instruction and give me a right way to go. Is there anybody going to go up on higher ground? Oh, if you do, you ought to just say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'll need you. Lord, I can't do without you. You are awesome, God. I can't do it on my own, but you can do it. Is there anybody here who's willing to say, I'm glad that one day, yesterday, he grabbed my fallen soul, lifted me up, and started me all over again. Is there anybody happy that our God looked beyond my faults and sees my needs. Oh, I don't know about you. I'm just glad to be in the fellowship of the Lord. Why don't you stand? There's a wonderful old song, Reverend Small. Call higher ground. I, I believe, I believe one verse. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights. Not this low level stuff. Not the muck. The mire. Not the dirt. Not the trash. I'm pressing on the upward way. Lord, plant these metatarsals and phalanges. What you say, Pastor? That's the Latin for feet and, and toes. <laughs> plant them on higher ground. Don't you want to get on some higher ground? I, I sometimes get to these particular family celebrations. Mother's Day, Father's Day. And sometimes it, it concerns me that, that sometimes families are just thinking about who hurt me. And there might be some legitimate aspects of that. But oh, if I can just release some of that tension and issues. And just ask God to, to bless me. That I can look beyond that. See things as he sees it. And then desire things like he desires. It's a marvelous little passage of scripture. I believe it's the 37th Psalm. Around about the fourth verse, I believe. I could be off. But they that delight in the Lord 
shall receive the desires of their heart. Why don't you just let God truly bless you with the desires of your heart? Not hate, not malice, but peace, but joy. And God wants to give it to you. Yes, he does. That's why he sent us his son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so in the fellowship of, of God's people, he says it's all right. You can let it go. Get free. Let God has his, have his way with you. Watch how he'll transform your life. I don't know how long it was with the incident back in Jerusalem with Barnabas and Paul. But I'm so glad that in a jail cell, one of the bucket list items for the Apostle Paul was to prove his relationship with John Mark. What a God we serve. So we come to the floor. Might be somebody want to make the greatest and best decision that you can possibly make. And God is saying, this is your day, this is your moment. Let me have my way with you. Let me show you a better way. Let me bless your life. If you don't know him, come to know him. Give him your heart. Never been baptized, make that decision of commitment. If you're without a church family, it's good to be in a place where people will love you for who you are. And want to encourage you to be all that God wants you to be. Let's lift that old song. I'm pressing on. Higher ground. I'm making progress. I want the Lord to take me on up to the greater scales. I upward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand new on heaven's table land. my feet on higher ground this is your moment this is your time what a difference it is But you know God loves you. He gives you a spirit to love others. Frees you up. Helps you to get stronger, wiser. Want to extend the invitation to prayer? I don't know a greater power than what you can do to release those things that 
are holding you from being all that God wants you to be. This prayer time. I'm grateful about the gathering of those who join with us in the middle of the week. The Wednesday prayer partners, the Thursday prayer partners. Just in case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of hate in this country. And I don't know what it's going to take to wake us up. And sometimes we want to place it on race and color. But I've come to the conclusion that the Pauline th thoughts are right. Paul didn't point a finger to anybody else. Paul said, I am that I am by the grace of God. It was no just little cliche that he used. He was rather inclusive didn't talk about anybody else he was honest about it for we all have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God we need his grace no matter how keen and our minds and clever our thinking we need God's grace thank you with heads bowed eyes closed as you hold the hand of the person who's near you and beside you heavenly father we come Asking you to bless us with your mercy, with your grace. We stand in the need of prayer. We stand before you, dear Lord, asking you to forgive us. Forgive us, dear Lord, of those secretive situations those unseen situations. And we thank you, dear Lord, that you are willing to hear us. And we ask, dear God, that you will just touch our lives and remind us that you love us, that you're willing to forgive us. Father, we come before your presence and we ask, dear Lord, that you'll put within us a desire to be obedient to you, to live the way you want us to live. And we pray, dear Father, that you'll help us to live in a way that is inviting to others. Help us to touch somebody else. Give us that Barnabas-like characteristic that we can look beyond ourselves and look at someone else and be encouraging to them. 
not covetous, not envious, but concerned about someone else being blessed. Take away any sense of selfishness and bless us, dear God, with a spirit of generosity. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers for our nation. We pray, dear God, that you will just bless us to see you and what you really want for us to be. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll walk our neighborhoods. We ask, dear Lord, that you'll enter our homes. And we pray, dear God, that you will transform these places of our board. And bless us, dear God, to love one another as your son taught us to do. Father, we ask that you hear our prayers. May this church be a place of love, of peace, of happiness. Those, dear Lord, who have saddened hearts, we pray, dear Lord, that there's enough of us who will cheer them up. And then we ask, dear God, that there'll be enough of us to encourage them on the journey. Now, Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers. We gave you a list of names of persons who need you in a special way. So do what you do always, Lord. Make your visits. Stop by hospital bedsides. Stop by homes. Stop by nursing homes. We ask, dear God, that you hear our prayers and bless your people. Now we ask, dear God, that you'll hear our prayers not only for ourselves but our nation. We pray, dear Lord, for the families of those sailors. Help them through this time of great need. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers for all humankind. Thank you for being our God. If there's anything that I've missed, Lord, you know what my heart's desire has been. Hear your people. Bless them. With this we ask in Jesus' name. Your will be done. Our sins forgiven. And the people of God said together, amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. We thank God for the invitation that he extended to us by way of his son and our savior Jesus Christ that we could come to this table. And as often as we do so, we do it in remembrance of him and all that he did for us. I'm gonna ask that you'll stand that we might join together in this communion litany that is found on just the inside of the cover page, the back cover. And let's read it responsively. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Therefore, lift your hearts in peace and joy. 
Let us give thanks unto the Lord God. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and in charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take his sacraments to your comfort, and make your confession to Almighty God. Together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our hearts. We have offended against the holy ways. We have undone those things which we ought to have done, and we ought to do those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promise declared unto mankind in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. You may be seated. One of the tenets of this particular moment of sharing together is what Jesus did in giving us an understanding of the elements. When he took that cup, he spoke these words. This is the blood of the new covenant. Nothing old, new. Which shall be shed for the remission of the sins of many. Not only is it a new covenant, but it's inclusive. In shedding blood, the children of Israel made a sacrifice that set them free of sin. But what Jesus was saying, it's not just Israel, it's all of us. And I have come to, to give of my blood that you will be free. How many people do you know is going to give up blood? Maybe I ought to put it in another way. Life? It only tells me one thing. They love me dearly. Amen. On a Father's Day. Hmm. How many times that man, the father, that probably made some sacrifices for us, gone to places of hard labor to make sure that we had a roof over our heads, clothes on our backs, food on the table. If you can take that image and our souls were at jeopardy and still in jeopardy that God made that sacrifice for us. You ought to just say, thank you, Lord. We're going to ask now that Deaconess Alfreda Watson will lead us in prayer. ever-present God. Mm. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity of communion, of coming to this table right now, coming with our minds open, our hearts open for the love that you've given us, and for us to just go out and give more love to others. We thank you, God, that we will remember just what you did for us over 2,000 years ago. You took our sins and you took them to the cross. And we can come here now and show forgiveness for others, and we just ask that we do it openly and that we continue to be blessed by you. Mm. So right now, dear God, we petition your blessings on these elements that 
our memories and the reminders of just who you are in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And on that Thursday evening, he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and they did eat. Let us now do likewise. Let us join together in saying amen. amen. And in like manner, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and they did drink. Let us now do likewise. Might the people of God join together in saying amen. amen. 